Hey guys, and welcome to Ask the Rabbi. I understand that you'll be hearing from Rabbi Weiss and from me, and uh, very curious to hear uh, how the, we're going to be similar in our answers and also how we're going to be different in our answers. Um, in any event, um, here we go. So um, here are the, the questions that, um, that you've asked. I'll, I'll just ask them one at a time and answer them. And uh, the first group are going to be uh, questions that I believe are being asked to both of us, both of us. So the first question is, do I know everyone at the temple? I wish. Um, I know a lot of people at the temple, and I've met, I think, most everybody. But there's a big difference between meeting somebody and really getting to know them. And so um, so it's it's a process, and I am looking forward to getting, if, I don't, if we don't know each other well yet, I really hope that over the next couple of years we'll get to know each other much better. That means a lot to me. And... Um, um, but, but if I were to be honest, no, I do not know everyone at the temple. Not yet. I hope the day will come soon where I'll be able to answer yes. Okay, the next question. What am I doing with my time at home and how am I holding up? Well, that's really two questions, but that's okay. I'll answer them anyway. Um, so what am I doing with my time at home? It may be hard to imagine but I'm actually working more hours as a rabbi now that the building's closed than I ever did before the building was closed, which is saying something because rabbis tend to work really long hours anyway. But there is so much that we have to do. We have to figure out how to be a synagogue without a building and how to connect with people in other ways and how to hold services and how to study Torah and how to teach and, and, and how to help people who are feeling sad or anxious um, in, a, in a really difficult time. And, and there are a number of people that feel that way. So we've been super, super busy, which means I've been super, super busy. Uh, and um, so most of my time, most of my time has actually been spent sitting in this chair that I'm sitting in right now in, in, a, in a room in, upstairs in my house. Um, and I, I haven't had a lot of time for much else. Um, so, um, so that's what I've been, that's how I've been, uh, that's what I've been doing. Uh, but I also, I also have had, you know, the opportunity to, both of my children are home. Um, they're a little bit older than you guys are. And so they're home with us. And so it's been nice to be able to, to see them a little bit more than I might have otherwise. And, um, and so we've had some, um, some great family time. In fact, we've had a family dinner together, all four of us, almost every night for seven weeks now. And that's crazy good. Uh, and, um, so yeah, so that's what I've been doing at home. And, and as far as how I'm holding up, I'm holding up. Okay. You know, just let, like the rest of us, we're learning how to, how to, how to manage change. But the good news is, is that people are really amazing in terms of how well we can change to adapt to our, our circumstances. And I think that that is, is, it's been amazing to watch. And so, uh, I, I would imagine you're doing that as well in, in some ways and you may not like it. I, I certainly um, would be really excited to get outside back into the world and see it all come back together again and be able to be together with you in, in a physical space. But, um, um, but even, even though we can't, to see ways that, that people are, are figuring out somehow, some way to, 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 to keep things going has really been inspiring to me. Okay, I think I wandered off your question. Why did I become a rabbi? Um, I had to. I didn't want to. I wanted to be a musician. That was that was what I was focused on. I spent my whole um, a teenage period, probably from the age of twelve or thirteen on, um, uh, focused on music as a career, and went to college and studied music and got graduate degrees in music and went out and pursued a career in music, and that was what I loved. But I was drawn to the rabbinate. And um, uh, Christians talk about being called. Um, it's not a language that we use so much in Judaism, but that's what I feel. I feel like I was called. Um, when I asked a friend of mine, now a friend, then my rabbi, um, who I was a little afraid of, um, if you know what he thought about becoming a rabbi, he said something really interesting to me. And it's, it was the best possible advice, although I didn't fully understand it when he, when he said this. But um, he said, he asked me, is there anything else that you could do that would give you such, that would fill your soul, that would, that would make you happy and give you joy? 
and purpose and meaning in your life? He said, because if there is, do that instead. Because being a rabbi is really hard. It's long hours. And, uh, and it can be grueling work. And he said, so if that doesn't really feed your soul, don't do it. But, he said, if this is the only thing that will feed your soul, that, that if you don't do this, you will be miserable. You will feel like you have missed out on something so necessary for you that it would affect you in, in your life then you have to do it because it's the most wonderful thing in the world and it will feed your soul and it will make your life beautiful. And that was true for me. Um, the moment I made the decision, it was like a light switched inside me and everything became better and I became more focused and, and I have no regrets. I have loved being a rabbi. It has fed my soul in all the ways that he said it would if that's truly what I needed. Um, so that's why I became a rabbi. That's the short version. I can give you a really long story, um, but then, you know, you'd still be in class tomorrow. Okay. Um, now we're getting to the questions that, oh, these are still questions for both of us. Um, how long have I been a rabbi at TBA and how long will I stay? <laughs> well, I am now, um, finishing up my fourth year. It's amazing to me. I've been, I've been with you for, for this long, um, uh, Four years, wow. Um, I love it here, and I hope that I will be able to stay as your rabbi um, for all the way until it's time for me to retire, which is not coming for a while, by the way. Um, but I, I really I really love being your rabbi and, 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 and look forward to, to continuing to do that for many, many years to come. How am I doing during this rough time? I'm doing just fine. Thank you for asking. I really appreciate it. How are you doing during this rough time? And if you're having a hard time during this rough time, you can you can reach out to us. Um, we're here to help. And I, I want to give you a little a little bit of a secret to part of of why I can say I'm doing okay. Um, I think that when a lot of what what I've been doing during this time, even though I've been working even more hours than I ever worked before, I think that when we know that we're helping another person. It helps us. And I think that's a big reason why I'm doing okay right now is because I, I know that I am able to help other people. And I'm sharing that with you because there are all kinds of ways that you can help other people too. Uh, and you don't even have to be a rabbi to do it. Maybe if you're not feeling good inside about, about what's going on, look for ways that you can help your, your mom or your dad or your neighbors or, or, or even your brother or your sister or, or anybody anybody at all in any way. Um, but the more that we go out and we help others, I think the, the, the more purpose and good feelings we have inside and the easier it is for us to manage in a, in a tough time. Um, so um, something to think about. Okay. If I were not a rabbi, what would I be? Miserable. I love being a rabbi. Um, before I was a rabbi, I was a musician. I, I very much liked being a musician, but being a musician professionally meant that I had to practice uh, my guitar every day for like, I don't know, five to seven hours. That meant I was in a little practice room all by myself for five to seven hours a day with no contact with other people. And while that was okay for a little while, doing that in the long term would truly make me miserable. So there's nothing else I'd rather do. This is where I need to be. Oh, uh, what is my favorite Torah portion and why? This is really hard. This is the hardest question you asked uh, for me because I like them all. I really do. It's really how I have a top five list. I have a top 10 list. I don't have a number one. Mm -hmm. In fact, I used to joke around when I, when I delivered sermons, um, uh, in a small synagogue where I would give a sermon every single week. And so I would say, this week's Torah portion is, and then say the name of the portion. And then, and then I would say, and it just happens to be, and then the congregation would respond back by saying, one of your favorites. And it was almost always true. Um, but I'll tell you this, the story that I love more than any other story from the Torah comes from the book of Genesis, from the end of the book of Genesis. It's the story of Joseph. And that story fascinates and inspires me, and I am drawn to it uh, in a different way than any other part of the Torah. Um, and what I love about Joseph is that um, it combines um, all 
Joseph is the person who I, I, I wish I could be more like. So I aspire. So he's my he's my role model in a certain in a certain way, not in every way, but someone who is able to to really grow as a person. As a kid, he was a little spoiled and a little mean, a little bratty, and he turned out to become someone who really had very deep faith and and was able to save his family and and many other people um, and and to become humble and. Uh, I, I find his his faith and his humility and and his kindness as an adult to be um, and his ability to deal with really difficult situations um, and come out on the other end um, unbroken to be really inspiring. And so I am especially drawn. I am especially drawn to the to the to the story of Joseph. And I think my favorite moment in all of Torah is when he is in Egypt. I don't know how familiar you are with the story, but he um, he wound up in Egypt as a slave, and then a prisoner, and then eventually became uh, Pharaoh's right hand man and, and the most important man, except for Pharaoh in all of Egypt. And his, he uh, reveals himself to his brothers, who uh, had something to do with him winding up as a slave in Egypt in the first place. And uh, he reveals himself. They they're in his throne room, and he's dressed up like an Egyptian with the makeup and the whole thing. And they have no idea who he is, and says, "Hi, I'm Joseph." And they freak out. And it's a beautiful moment. Um, I really love that. Okay, um, now we've got uh, three questions that you have uh, just for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and run through those for you. Um, the first is, "What is my dog's name?" Oh, you know, I should have I should have gotten uh, the dog here so you could see her. Uh, in fact, I'm going to pause this right now and get my dog. Hang on a second. <laughs> 